Ride the car guy here, and today we're gonna heat some seats. Regardless of where you live, uh, nothing really beats that warm feeling you get from a seat heater. So the Xterra clearly didn't come with them. Even 15 years ago when it was new, it was the base base model, so uh, definitely didn't come with any sort of seat heater. That's why we're gonna install these today. I got a kit online. I put the link in the description below. I believe they're under $40 a piece, so not a terribly large investment to get kind of a fun modern feature. Should be a quick job. There's just one little electrical connector underneath the driver's seat of the Xterra, and then the four bolts. We'll yank it out, peel back the upholstery, and install our kits. Let's go do it. Taking our front seat out should be relatively simple. We have four bolts, two in the front, two in the rear. And then in the front, we just have one under this plastic cover here. And then over here, we have one near the center console. These are gonna be 14 millimeter bolts. We just take those two out. And then we do have this little guy here, this electrical connector. And so if we just take that, you just have to squeeze it. This is gonna be your seatbelt sensor. Just squeeze it and that just comes right out. Excellent, those two are out, so let's just take this uh, seat, slide it all the way forward, and then go take the two off in the back, and then this whole seat can come right out. Awesome, both of the back ones have covers as well, so let's just uh, pop that one off. This one, I believe, is kind of a bigger, let's see. Oh yeah, that should just pop right off. Um, there. Nothing special there, just kind of yank on it and it comes off. Grab your ratchet again same size and then just pull them off so that's it both are off here in the rear so what we're gonna do is just kind of gently slide this back so it's more centered on the tracks and then just pull the seat out and bring it in the garage So two things that were kind of difficult to see on the camera as I was pulling the seat out is that uh, the headrest, I had to remove the headrest just to make it a little bit easier to actually pull the seat out. And then also there was a little retaining clip that held the wire that goes into the car uh, into the seat. So I just had to take a little needle nose player, pull that out. So that way when you yank the seat out, you're not pulling on that cord and putting a lot of pressure on it. So, and obviously the seat itself just won't come out until that gets released. So let's get started on pulling the upholstery off. We have a few spots we need to work on here. We have the bottom half. So this, uh, this connects, this kind of wraps down and connects to the bottom portion of the seat. And then of course up here, we have a few connectors that connects the bottom to the top and then some zippers that we can use to kind of pull this back. Now, generally speaking, this stuff can be tough uh, because it's so tight fitting. So what I'm gonna do is, my goal is to effectively not take it all the way off. It will be not only difficult to get back on, but it may not fit correctly once it's back on and it'll look funky and I really don't want that. So let's just start by taking these two uh, kind of things that look like they're sort of clipped, but you just kind of pull them off here. Next, if you flip this back, you'll see uh, there's some zippers just tucked in. So we can start by unzipping this here. How handy. And then it looks like it's connected via uh, some sort of track. It'll slide freely. Let me see if we can kind of easily get this off here. Yep. So all I did is I just took my fingers and I sort of pulled back on this track until it disconnected from this one. And then I have a feeling when we're done, we're just gonna push these back together. Oh, just like that. <laughs> there you go. It's kind of cool here if you look Here's the lumbar, this is how the lumbar works. So here's my little bar, or my little uh, knob up here. Turn this, and it just turns this bar in. Pretty fancy stuff, high tech. Anyway, so if we take this in, this, is the, this piece actually goes to the top of the seat, so it goes to the top upholstery. We just wanna push this through, so effectively pull from the other side, and push it through on this side to get these disconnected here. And there actually may be, let me, let me look at this real quick, because we may want to consider dropping the seat back to make it easier. 
Cool. Yeah, so pulling the seat back. So go pull the lever and pull the seat all the way back and then you can pull this straight out. It makes it a lot easier. Then we just need to take these pieces and fold them back. Excellent. Same on the other side. Awesome. So take a look here. At this point, we have these tracks, these like these sort of these tubes that are stapled into the upholstery. Now what I want to do is avoid even messing with that because as of right now, I can reach into this entire section here. So what I'm hoping is that this is as far as I have to go. I have the kit, it's just a flat piece, I'll show you here in a minute, but you, hopefully I can just sort of push this fabric up, maybe hold it with my fingers here, and then slide it up and just stick it down into the upholstery. So we'll see how that goes. Now let's try to pull this bottom part off. This whole, the bottom upholstery is on sort of like a track that snaps in around the outside uh, edge, at least that's how it looks to me. So I'm going to try to remove the entire seat bottom. And it looks like if I have these four little bolts here, uh, if we take these off, this whole thing may just pop right off. And so these are 12 millimeter. So go ahead and remove those and we're just going to see what happens. All right, we have those removed and hey, hey, that's looking pretty promising. The last thing we need to do, it looks like, to make this work is to take this uh, seat belt uh, warning light cable and take these connectors and just pop them off uh, because it's connected to the actual bottom of the seat itself. So let's just pop those off and then this entire bottom seat should come right off. All right, so to be honest, I just kind of yanked these off. Um, I have very little patience for these stupid little clips. It looks like they fared pretty well uh, with that abuse. So uh, I'm just gonna keep moving forward. If we just pull this off now, see how this comes off. Let's flip it up, see if we can do something a little easier here. All right, so uh, I forgot about our little seat adjusters here. So we actually need to remove these as well. These are just on post and it looks like they have, uh, oh, looks like they just have a little clip that you need to pull out and these should come right off. So let's try that out. Yep, simple as that. Just has this little uh, black clip here and you effectively just push it on or off this uh, to make it fit. That's it. So you push it back down when we're ready. We can install it, probably just install it in this and then push it down on this and then it'll snap in place. Let's take off the next one. Cool, it just flew into outer space. While pulling this out, I somehow managed to lose it. It was literally on the end of this and then just disappeared, um, whatever. So be careful pulling it off. Uh, I'll try to find it. If not, that's going to be a nice uh, specialized part I need to find. So now what I think we need to do here is, let's see here. You have this bar here. If we try to lift, it'll hit this. So we just kind of kind of gently pull it up like that. There we go. Pull it to the, the side because they need to come off of these posts on the top. There we go. Looks like we just need to pull this last piece of fabric out from this support bar. We just need to pull this foam out and push that forward. There we go. Ta-da! We have our piece out. So here is the kit that I bought. So we have here two heating pads, the wiring harness, which includes a relay, of course, our little switch and the wires that connect to, of course, both pads and a negative and positive with an inline fuse. This also comes with an upholstery tie down with a little tool. Um, don't really plan on using that, but it also comes with a few zip ties. Now, this technically they're calling a fuse tap, which sure, that will technically work. I don't like the design of this one. So I also bought these fuse taps, which are uh, substantially better in my opinion. So what this does is you plug this directly into your fuse box you put your fuses in, and then you wire this up to the positive side of your wiring harness. The reason this is so great is you don't need to cut any factory wires in your car. This will technically accomplish the same thing, but I don't like this whole raw just piece sitting out here like that. So um, definitely invest in this. I think uh, there's 10 in here. I think they were under they were under 20 bucks for sure. They may be under 10. So um, definitely worth it because especially if you want to reverse this in the future and you want to take this out. You just simply unplug this and then you pull out the wiring and you don't have any weird split wires to deal with.
huge advocate for these. So for now, I'm gonna set all this aside except for just one of my pads. Then we're gonna pull the bottom portion of the seat up first and we're gonna install the pad. So we wanna be strategic here. Each pad has these uh, adhesive strips and we're gonna pull these back and this is what is going to hold it in place. And you wanna make sure that when you're, you're putting the adhesive down, that you're putting it foam side down. So you're actually gonna put it like this and then of course your wires you wanna have as close, as, as close to the rear as possible, the rear of the seat. So it looks like this is gonna be a pretty darn tight fit. Um, it says you should not be trimming any of these um, pads, so don't cut the pieces off here. Um, so with that being said, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be interesting, it's gonna be a chore getting this to fit in here, but that's okay. We're gonna flip this back, and you should also dry fit as well. So effectively, we just wanna pull this, just kinda see how this is gonna work for us. All right, so that was an incredibly tight squeeze. So the, the main goal is, is you don't want any folding. So you don't want it to fold in on the edges or be folded up in the center here. So on this one, uh, you just kind of kind of jam it into the seams and kind of run it down and push it down into the upholstery, um, or sorry, the foam, and push it down into the crease that exists right here. And it kind of fits into it. Um, I'm just gonna kind of do one more check here make sure that the center here is not folded and then just push it down into each corner. Frankly, with this tight of a squeeze, you may not even need to pull off those adhesive strips. Um, I probably will anyways, just to be sure, but man, it is like just fitting all the way around this edge. And then we have this back here still sticking out a little bit. I'm not too worried about that. Uh, my plan is to just take it here, stick it down and then obviously have this um, routing it to underneath the seat itself. So I feel pretty comfortable with where it's at. Uh, if you want, you can probably reach your hand behind the pad. So flip this down and then get to the bottom of this and just pull these strips out from the other side and that will stick them down. So I'll probably do that and then, um, and then just do the two sides and the back and not worry about the front since um, if you have each one of these strips uh, glued down, and this is of course stopping here because of the seam, I don't think you're gonna need to pull off that front strip. All right, I was able to get most of this strip on, the, on this side and about half on this side, and then I'm just gonna pull this rear strip off and glue it down, and I'm just gonna be happy and call that good enough. Just doing one last fitment check. Make sure everything's kind of put where I want it to be. I'm, you can just pull this back and take a look down it. Everything seems to be in pretty good shape. Excellent. And now, just take this piece over here, flip it, make sure it's not sitting on any metal pieces here, and then obviously we're gonna reassemble this bottom half. Uh, again, just make sure this isn't rubbing against the bottom pan here. Um, we'll have to work something out. It looks like the foam sits over top of the uh, frame in certain places or the pan. And so we can kind of just make sure it rests there by zip tying or whatever we need to do. And now I'm gonna set this aside and we're gonna do the same thing for the back of the chair. Now it looks like this one's gonna be a lot easier. It looks like it's a little bit taller. Well, it's definitely taller. And then um, about the same width. So we should be okay here to just kind of shove this sucker in, pull those strips out, and we should be good to go. Again, we wanna make sure that the adhesive strips are uh, facing foam side. And then just kinda of work it in here. Just up a little bit further here. Pretty cool, all right. Well, that was uh, exponentially easier. We have it installed here. And uh, it looks pretty smooth. So, I just have it here. I haven't pulled the strips out yet, but I plan to. Um, again, I'm probably just gonna do the two side strips, pull those out, and then the bottom, just to keep it all in place. And then, uh, and then that's it. 
we effectively just need to pull this out, make sure this is routing down to the bottom of the frame here, and then uh, start reassembling the seat. Now that I feel uh, everything looks good, I'm just going to put all the upholstery back in place, flip it all back down, tuck it into all of its, all of its proper places. Now for the top of the seat, I'm going to take this cable here, obviously this is our seat heater we just installed, and since we have to flip this over, I'm just going to route it along back with it, down the side, and just kind of find a, a, a reasonable place to have it come out from underneath the upholstery. Looks like right here, I just ran it down the, whatever edge this comes off on, I just ran it down, kind of followed the upholstery, and then have it pop out right next to this channel here. Next we're going to grab the bottom of the seat and let me flip this up here and how I want to do this is first of all route this fabric back through behind the bar this uh, big support bar here in the center make sure that's pulled up good and I believe it had this little foam piece in here but we'll wait to pull that out flip this over and we need the, uh, these adjustment bars to make it through these two holes. So we kind of want to just set everything into place here. Okay. I'm just pulling the, that plastic, large plastic piece of the bottom upholstery through. Now I'm just going to push these over, these two adjustment bars. go and then just kind of slowly push it all back into place great so now that we have this back through grab that foam piece push it back in place there so everything kind of keeps its form and at this point I would check and just kind of make sure these are still freely moving, that we haven't pinched anything just yet. Everything's looking good, so I'm going to keep going here. It looks like I put the pan underneath the bracket instead of on top, so i got to go pull it back off and readjust it. I won't make you watch that. I have the bracket realigned, so I'm just going to go ahead and throw my bolts back in. Next, I'm going to grab this last piece of the bottom fabric here, push that back in place, make sure my wires are still in a good place, and then rewire my seatbelt wire here. Lastly, we just want to grab these two here, uh, just kind of maybe just zip tie them to something down here to make sure they're in a safe place and kind of up and tucked away. And then what we're going to do is we'll just have them available to plug in. I'm sure we can reach in under the seat. There's going to be a lot of space. Plug in and then just connect our, um, our wiring harness after the fact. So I'm just going to zip tie these up, zip this back piece back up, and then we're going to go install it back into the truck. Now before we put the seat back in, we can make some decisions on how we want the wiring to go. And honestly, we can just about finish up the wiring, everything but just plugging it into the heat pads itself before the seat ever comes in. Now of course we're going to have to connect the seat, and we're going to have to get the entire wiring harness up behind the dash. And then the fuse box is over here, so where we're going to tap into a fuse. And then I'm actually going to put the button over here in this panel. Uh, my reasons for that are twofold. Well, first of all, I like the location, and second of all, I'm really kind of neurotic about being able to put my car back to stock. So to put the button in, you need to drill a hole, and I don't like drilling into these types of body panels. So this piece here, this is removable. This is where buttons would go if you had other features on the car. So I'm going to screw into that, and then that way if I ever want to go back to stock, I can replace just that piece, put it back in, and everything's the way that it was. So I'm going to start by putting the correct connectors underneath the seat. So let's find those. That would be right here. So pull this out. There we go. And so I'm going to need a little bit of space so we can leave about, I don't know, that much. So I can effectively start wiring or start tucking away the wires here and leave all of this available to plug into the seat itself. Now, remember, the seat is on tracks and the seat can move forward and backwards. So what we want to make sure you do is leave enough room that if that seat moves forward all the way, 
or back all the way that you're not putting any tension on these. So grab that and this piece here, my button. So once we get up underneath the dash, you can actually disconnect this temporarily, which is great. So we can wire the button separately and then just tie it into the harness afterward. Just start by pulling this plastic piece back and then effectively just shoving the cables underneath. It's actually quite simple. There we go. Awesome. Keep going around this curve here until you reach the back of the dash. There we go. That's already it. So now we have this tucked away. This has more than enough space to move around uh, back and forth. And if you pull on one side, the other should move freely. So that way we know we're not pinching anything. From here, I'm gonna take my positive and negative and run them underneath to the other side behind the fuse box. So this will tuck behind the center console. So if you just kind of shove them through there, you can pull it from the other side. And now we have more than enough space to tap this into our fuse box here. And then just find a ground anywhere under the dash to, well, connect the ground. Any excess that you have underneath your dash, just make sure that you're tucking it below and just zip tying it to something so it doesn't get in the way of your pedals. Then the next thing we need to do is to pull this plastic piece out and install our button. You can pull this piece out just by reaching behind your dash and on the top and the bottom there's just little clips. If you push down on those and pull it out, uh, it just pops right off. So let's go in the garage, drill a hole in here, put in the button, and then when we come back we can finish up our wiring and then install our seat. Alright, I have a 3 quarter inch uh, speed bore. Hopefully it, uh, it fits, it looks like it's the exact size. For whatever reason the directions don't, uh, don't tell you, which is kind of odd. So. Effectively, I'm just gonna go as close to the center as I can. Uh, might try to maybe punch a little bit into this to kind of get some friction going on there. I can't find anything, so let's do it. So I'm just gonna get as close to the center as I can. There we go. And so I'm just gonna drill this out and then slide the button through. Uh, by the way, you really should have this in a vise. Uh, I'm being a little irresponsible here, but um, but I don't have a vice, so I gotta do it this way. All right, so I'm just gonna take a blade, just kind of clean up those edges. Let's see if this fits. Yeah, it looks like it's gonna fit. It's pretty exciting. All right, that looks pretty good. So let's grab this, feed it through, and then just make sure it's aligned. So obviously we want the top to be the hot part, right? Push it in. Okay. So far, so good. There we go. I want to work it in. I want it to be really tight. So you want to just kind of slowly work it in. I'm not going to drill it bigger. All right. So here's our button. The three quarter bit was definitely tight, but you want it to be tight. You definitely don't want it to be loose because this will just kind of flop around and maybe even pull out of this, which is uh, definitely never good. So uh, let's just go put this back in the dash. Now we have this to connect to our harness. And then now all we need to do is hook up the power and tuck up the wires and we're ready to put the seat in. So now that we have the button installed into our little uh, piece here, you want to make sure it's oriented correctly. So just have your high up and your low low, I guess, or low down. And then tuck it behind the dash and snap it into place. So now we have the button in place and we can connect it to our wiring harness, which is right here. So snap that in. And now all we need to do is we need to make sure that this is all tucked away. So you wanna be really careful about having anything hanging near your pedals. So if we just fold this back, I'm gonna grab some zip ties and I'm just gonna tie it up underneath something here to make sure it doesn't fall down. Once I have this done, we're gonna go over and we're gonna wire it into the fuse block. Now I talked about this earlier, but for the wiring I got a, what's called a low profile mini add a circuit. And what this is gonna allow us to do is effectively plug into a circuit that's existing in our fuse block. So this plugs directly into where a fuse would go 
and then it adds a new circuit. So we have a uh, 10 amp for the new line, and then we're gonna replace, um, well, we're probably gonna plug into the washer, but I'll show you that in a second. But regardless, you plug in two fuses now. So one is for the existing circuit, and one is now for your new circuit. And to get this wired up, we just have to cut the head off of the cable that comes from the seat heaters and strip it out. Once that's stripped, we just push it into our connector here. There we go. And then just clamp it down. That's it. So what we'll wanna do is just take this and feed it through the bottom of the dash into our fuse block area. All right, easy as that. Now, it was very nice of them, but Nissan went ahead and on the back of the fuse block cover is not only a list of all of the fuses and what they go to, but they also marked on whether or not it turns on with the key or if it's always on. In fact, it even shows if some of them are on the, in the accessory position. So you can just look at this list and decide what circuit you wanna add on to. I decided I'm gonna put it on the washer circuit. So all we need to do is find where this fuse is in the block. So it looks like one, two, three, four, the fourth one up on the right pull it out and then uh, just push this in. However, before you do this, make sure that you're taking a negative battery cable off of the battery, uh, just since we're messing with electronics. So we're gonna go ahead and close this up because we're done in there. And now we just need to find a ground that this can go into. So there's gonna be body grounds all over the place. Uh, I'm gonna look inside the passenger footwell since I already routed the cable over here, but you could even route this back over to the driver's side and find one there as well. The beauty of most of these trim panels is you can kind of just pull them off to go find a ground. So for instance, just put your fingers behind this. That just pops up. It literally just, it basically falls out of the car. And then in here, do the same thing. Should be a uh, few connectors here. You might need to, this one feels kind of tough. You might need to grab a, like a, I don't know, a screwdriver or something to kind of get some leverage on it. So I pulled this back and to be honest, I completely forgot. I already have an absolute mountain of stuff back here. Um, I have stuff for the the hitch. I had to install some new relays. Looks like my backup camera stuff is in here and some stuff for the LED strip lights. So I'm actually gonna put this back up. There's probably a few in here you could use uh, to ground, but honestly, I have a lot going on in here. So I'm gonna close this back up and I'll probably route this back to the driver's side. So on the other side here, looks like we can find something, I'm sure. So again, just pull this off with your fingers it pops right off same story here just kind of get something back here to kind of gain some leverage there you go awesome yeah I see a, I see a bolt right here I'll take a photo of it in case you can't see it so I'm just gonna grab the negative cable pull it back through here and then go get my ratchet and we'll just unscrew that sucker is a 12 millimeter we will unscrew that grab this basically just grab it slide it through just like that in fact we'll probably want it yeah we'll want it like that and then screw it back in that's it so we just fed that bolt through and tightened it back down and we should be good with our ground now I just need to take this wire here, obviously make sure it's out of the way of the pedals, just like I did before, and the same on the other side. Then we just go grab our seat, install it, and test everything out. Now there's a pin in the right rear side of the track, so make sure that falls into place correctly and then all the rest of your bolt holes should line up. Now, before we put our bolts in, we can make sure, well, make sure two things. Make sure you plug in all your electrical connectors. So now that's gonna be not only the two wires from each of the heating pads, but also the uh, seatbelt indicator light. Secondly, make sure that when you set the seat back into the car, you didn't pinch the new wires that you have running from your center console. Everything is looking good. So I'm gonna plug everything back in and then screw everything back down. The four mounting bolts go down at 33 foot pounds. So make sure you're using a torque wrench.
So here we are, our uh, sort of moment of truth, if you will. Uh, first of all, obviously, if you put it into the correct circuit, you're not going to have an issue, but you can triple check that, you're, that you didn't put it in the wrong circuit or a battery or always on circuit by simply clicking the button and uh, seeing if it turns on with the car off. Well, it doesn't, so we're in good shape. If you want to, you could have put it into a circuit for ACC or accessory. So that means when you put when you flip the key to the accessory position, then the seat heater will work. I decided to do it on ignition, which means it's only going to run when the car is actually running. All right, so we have our engine running. I'm going to flip it onto the highest setting and just wait a minute or two, see how it feels. All right, so less than 30 seconds and I'm already feeling it. Yeah, this is pretty cool. I like this. It's nice to kind of add a, a modern feature to an older vehicle. And plus, I just really love seat heaters. I love being really hot, so. These pads actually work quite well. I'm pretty happy with these. Um, I do wish that I, I could have put the pads like higher up on the back of the seat and then of course further forward on the lower portion of the seat. But honestly, I really don't think it's worth that extra work of taking those uh, upholstery rings out and having to redo all of those rings just to get it a little bit further up. Uh, and in fact, I don't even know if you could because you would have to kind of pinch the pad uh, to make that work. So honestly, this is probably as good as you're gonna get in this format. One last check. Uh, I'm gonna leave the seat heater on and then turn the car off. And I just wanna make absolutely sure that the seat heater turns off with the car. So here we go. Excellent. So seat heater turns off. No worries about draining my battery or forgetting to turn it on and having some sort of, a, I don't know, a fire or something crazy like that. Who knows? So that's it. Job done. Um, honestly, it looks, it kind of looks difficult. Actually, I don't even know. You tell me. Does it look difficult? Um, because it wasn't. It was actually pretty easy. Uh, Nissan, you know, in some things they do really poorly. Some things I really kind of get irritated about. But a lot of things they do, I really enjoy. Like working on the seat was super easy. It was easy to take out, easy to take apart, and easy to reassemble everything, of course. So uh, definitely not that difficult of a job. I absolutely recommend that you go buy those ADA circuits. Um, again, you can find those if you want in my, um, in my Amazon store or, of course, in a link down below in the description. Next, I want to ask you, my viewers, what do you guys want to see done to this Xterra? I've asked you a few times, gotten some good feedback. I have a few things in the hopper, but honestly, I'm still running out of stuff to do on this car. Um, again, it just runs great. There's nothing wrong with it, so there's really nothing to repair. So uh, give me ideas. Shout out in the comments below. Uh, let me know what you would like to see me do to this 2005 two-wheel drive Xterra. Lastly, like the video if you liked it. Subscribe for more content like this. Also, head to rtcg.tv and click that merch button if you want to support the channel. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next one.